Hi, I'm Mark Unger, producer of Roundtable. Because we find this presentation so special, we really would like for you to see this. Please watch. Hello and welcome to Single Shot Show at Manhattan Neighborhood Networks Roundtable. Today we're bringing you on uh, a private viewing of uh, one of the most interesting art exhibitions going on right now in New York City. This is uh, the exhibition at uh, Track Morton Arts called uh, Times of Change and Spencer was very kind uh, to uh, be willing to show us the exhibition and tell us about those two fine artists. So as I understand Spencer they are both from Mexico and uh, they both female photographers from uh, mid of 20th century, correct? Correct. Yeah, they're very, very important for Mexico. And uh, it's, uh, they were both friends. The older one was uh, Lola Alvarez Bravo, who was the wife of Manuel Alvarez Bravo. And she started her career in 1934 uh, because there was a divorce from Manuel and mm. she had been working with Manuel uh, developing photographs and understanding photography and so she went on her own in 1934 because she had to support herself and her son and she worked for various magazines. She was also a very close friend of Frida Kahlo and some of the great photographs that she took was the ones documenting the life of Frida Kahlo and she is one of the first people to do actually f filmmaking in Mexico and she did a film on Frida Kahlo, mm -hmm. which there are only about three uh, fragments left today because it was early 40s. It's unfortunate. It is unfortunate, yes. And uh, these are three great examples of Lola's uh, photographs of Frida. These were taken in the Blue House and this also shows here and here Frida's love of uh, Tepesquintly dogs, which she helped save the breed. They were the hairless Mexican dogs that date from the pre-Columbian times. And in pre-Columbian times, they were eaten and kept as bed warmers. But Frida's constant companions were her dogs. And uh, these, the photographs are taken in the Blue House, which was Frida's family house, and Frida lived uh, for most of her life. Oh, this is fascinating yeah. collection, and, and it's depictions of Frida Kahlo that uh, really brings out the character we see in her pictures. These are photographs that traveled in an exhibition called Lola Alvarez Bravo in 1993, and these are the actual photographs and from that exhibition. And as I understand, there was a recent uh, large exhibition of this artist as well. Yeah, there was a fantastic exhibition in London called Making Herself Up, which is at the V&A. It will close the end of November. And I just found out, and I'm very happy, that Brooklyn is doing a show on Frida Kahlo in February of, two, of 2019. Mm. So we have something to look forward to. Wow. So yeah. that's one of the perks of being in New York. There is always yeah. something as fascinating as this happening. Yeah. Well, so. Frida is probably the most important woman artist of the 20th century. She has now surpassed Diego Rivera, her husband, and uh, there's new research and new publications yearly on Frida. And uh, the depth of uh, study and interest in Frida grows every year. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. uh, she's definitely one of the most talented uh, artists per se. And personal pride of Mexico yes. has uh, been Mexican. And uh, on top of everything, she's probably the only uh, painter who is famous for self-portraits. And right. that's even Most more interesting to see how different the actual depiction of Frida made by the artist is from the way she herself seen her. Exactly. That's a very good point. I agree with you. That's I true. I would say the biggest difference is very peaceful. I don't know yeah. if it's the photographer yeah. uh, vision reflected or uh, it's 
really the true it's nature. It's very thoughtful. Of, Frida yeah. started life retouching photographs for her father, who was a major photographer for society and for the government in Mexico in the teens. And uh, Frida went around with him uh, with his camera as he was photographing and took care of him because he had epileptic, uh, epileptic fits and she would uh, protect him and protect the camera. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. I mean, and uh, she re was the first to retouch his photographs and that's when she started to paint. Oh, yet another artist who was majorly influenced by photography. I mean, remember the Picasso's broken camera, which some claim actually had huge influence on his aesthetics. Wow, that's true. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. very, I actually, very important. Actually, point. as a photographer, I can tell you that some of his works really look like uh, photographs taken with a lens damaged in a specific way. And I don't know in which way his lens is damaged, but if it is so, probably that's why he got inspiration for these specific uh, modifications of reality. Yeah, that's true. That's very good. Oh, so here we have some of the earlier works of uh, Lola. Uh, she was very interested in the indigenous people and then she's paired with Mariana Jampolsky who, was, uh, who was, uh, was an American who went to Mexico and worked with the TB, the uh, Tayer de Grafica and was one of the founding members. And uh, she was also very much interested in the indigenous people and indigenous life in Mexico. So in the 40s and 50s and 60s, they are recording and documenting uh, daily life in Mexico. Ooh, there is always something fascinating by a masterful taken uh, ethnographic image, especially if it's dated, when uh, this particular part of life doesn't exist, at least not in the form in which it's depicted. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that in modern Mexico you probably can find similar images, but just the notion itself that this particular moment wouldn't ever exist brings a touch of surreal to the most realistic image. Uh, that's true. This uh, by Mariana Jampolsky is very surreal with the bull and the young girl. The young girl is smiling in the doorway and it's like a passage in time and it's just incredibly yeah, that, moving uh, photograph. That actually was the image I was looking at when I uh, had this notion that really has something conceptual like in platonic sense uh, about it. The bull have mm -hmm. significance for many cultures in uh, oh, yeah. different ways uh, for Since every culture. Times, yeah. So if you think about it, uh, uh, people from different cultures with different association with this particular Im image would interpret it completely differently. Mm -hmm. That's for true. one culture it will be depiction of power, for another it would be depiction of nobility, for another culture it will be depiction of uh, money. Remember right. our bull is a little girl, it's right. in a way same uh, situation but uh, interpreted in a completely different way before it started to exist. Oh yeah, yeah that's so true. And here we go back to uh, a photograph of uh, Mariana with the daily life, which is a, a scene uh, during the Day of the Dead. It's a celebration. Mm -hmm. And then we move over to, to Lola again, which shows two uh, workers resting in two tubes in construction, but very modernist in a way. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's uh, so interesting that this image is predating what is happening right now in terms of homeless living in uh, tubes all right. around the world. Right. If they were just resting there, that uh, actually makes adds another layer to the image. Oh, this is interesting. So uh, I know that nothing is accidental in uh, the way you're curating your expositions, and uh, the connection between those two artists, the reason why you have them uh, both in the exhibition, as I understand, they both started with uh, a huge interest in ethnographic uh, uh, part of Mec uh, life of Mexico at that time, mm -hmm. correct? That's correct, yeah. So but both different interpretations and but very much rooted in daily life of Mexico and ethnographically as well as socially. Well, uh, yeah, I already mentioned it before we started uh, mm -hmm. this conversation that uh, in the later part of their artistic career they uh, drifted in completely different directions. and. Uh, but uh, how would you say the ethnographic approach, the view for life of Mexico in the early uh, time was different or similar? Well, I think that Lola's was more of a documentary 
where uh, Marianas was more introspective and more interested in the social aspects of the people. She really got into trying to capture daily life mm -hmm. and in a rural setting, and uh, Lola was documenting it. So there's a, there's a little bit departure in each one, but Mariana goes on to do uh, very modern uh, photographs of plants and, and portraits and uh, has a new approach. Uh, Lola goes into doing abstractions and doing collages. Mm -hmm. So they both have departures in different well, ways. It's actually interesting how they evolved in a different way, but uh, it actually is rooted in uh, differences in the way we st they started in uh, the same area of uh, photography. Mm -hmm. So let's continue and uh, yeah, take a look at more, uh, some more of those. Photographs by uh, Mariana, both the uh, this uh, deals with the Day of the Dead, with the Maurer girls, and uh, daily life with the bread. And here is Lola documenting the cleaning of trains because trains were very important for transportation. Mm -hmm. And then next to it is another portrait of Lola doing uh, a haircut in the village square and then people doing laundry by the river, but very beautifully portrayed. And then you move into a, a very interesting photograph by uh, Mariana of a lady in a doorway. And then we move back into, here's an, uh, Isabella Villasenor done by uh, Lola but reclining, which has uh, echoes into pre-Columbian times with the position of the human figure reclining on this. Uh, it's like the Chuck Mool of okay. ancient Mexico. It's truly a fascinating figure, but if we can back up just one photograph, mm -hmm. you uh, said uh, that there is something special about this photo besides just its visual. What's the significance of it? Well, I think this is an indigenous woman and she's also probably a midwife, but what is so nice is the way she's coming out because it's very modernist with the way the textiles are done and the person in front of it. it the point of view is very unusual. Absolutely. The composition is also constructed in a very modernistic way. Mm -hmm. It's uh, highly centered and yet completely disbalanced, which actually creates the balance. Oh, that's true. It's one of those decisive moments. A decisive moment, is, really as Cartier Brisson said, yeah, that's true. Oh, this one looks definitely more posed, but probably it was meant to be uh, posed because it actually is referring to uh, existing art forms. Yes, yeah. Oh. And, and what this is a young this girl. In, it's, a, it's a very unusual photograph by Lola. Mm -hmm. uh, of a young girl, it's called, uh, but it, it's, it has a real impact because of the position of the figure. Well, emotionally, definitely have the real impact. Uh, is there any story behind it? I don't know the story the behind it. No. Sometimes, but it's it's very interesting. It's untitled, so we don't know. No, it's what I what I love about this is called the the. Uh, uh, the, this is a, a seller in the market and he is selling clothes and someone is trying them on but he's holding <laughs> the, the, he's making sure you know it's not stolen I presume <laughs> but actually there is no privacy here <laughs> which is kind of funny because the whole idea of the little uh, thing was for the changing booth and the booth really has no uh, no privacy oh, and I see the image of the object that probably defined everyday life of the 20th century. The mm -hmm. sewing machine was mm -hmm. something that really reshaped how the family looks, how the house of uh, uh, poor and uh, mid-income population looks. It was in every house and that exact thing is known to everybody throughout the world. That's true. So it's, it's very modernist though in the way the position of the pole, the position of uh, the lighting and the position of the sewing machine on outdoors, oh, which usually you don't see, but yeah, you would see it in rural Mexico. Oh, it's very unusual. And the lighting and is incredible. It is in front of the water body, which brings yeah. another layer of the connection between uh, the secluded home life and uh, being wide open. Huh. 
And here's another one by Lola in the in the Central Park in Mexico City. It's a very unusual ghost-like figure. Yes, uh, it definitely has ghost-like properties, and it's one of those images. It's actually very interesting. Very mysterious. Yeah. Uh, it's very interesting that some of those images uh, you just throw the glimpse and uh, mm -hmm. you already see the uh, composition, the idea, the general feel of it, but on some of them, and especially if it's darker one with more of the half tones on the darker side, mm -hmm. you really have to decipher it. Come close and uh, look at it. Another one of Lola's, which is very unusual, they do processions for feast days, and here they're loading on a transport uh, vehicle for uh, a saint to be uh, done, to be taken through the streets uh, on, on Easter, Samantha Santa, and that's what's taking place here, but it's very surrealistic, and but a modernistic way, I mean, it is. it's very open and uh, you know, it's pre-procession, uh, so it's mm -hmm. nice. If we mentioned uh, the current uh, trend in photography, uh, which gives more prominence and m more exploration of photographers outside of Europe and America, who used to be for many years almost exclusively the photo artist that was famous around the world and was getting credit, and uh, uh, also the uh, more prominence to female artists and especially male photographers which actually makes it very interesting that we have one of the reasons why this trend started Frida Kahlo depicted in this exhibition so as I understand those uh, photographs are a great example of why we're actually trying to look into this direction and uh, give back to the world uh, a lot of uh, gems that was forgotten and uh, wasn't ge getting adequate exposure so let's look at uh, those photographs. And, uh, Th these are, are uh, beautiful 16 by 20s done by Mariana Jampolsky, who came from Europe, went to Chicago, studied in New York, and went to Mexico, and became uh, one of the founding members of the Taller de Grafica in Mexico City. She started doing uh, etchings and drawings, and then moved to photography and through her association with Manuel Alvarez Bravo and her association with Lola became a photographer and full time. So her emphasis has always been on the indigenous people but more on a personal level because you can see how tender the photograph is here of, in, of a mother and child and as well as the father and son here. You have a very uh, captivating and very soft and tender photograph of the father oh. and son. Yeah, it's actually very interesting. I didn't realize that this pair actually connected in terms of both being depicting different sides of parenting. Okay. At that time, emotional life was almost exclusively directed at uh, female lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So that's probably what was missing from photography. If you think about it, uh, the sensual part, the part that is fo focusing on vulnerability and uh, in a way the progression of human race was uh, something that was in many ways missing from uh, interest of photography just they was more interested in decisive moments probably like this version of the train talking about significance of civilization not significance of personality and human connection right yeah i think you're right so and here we have uh, uh, mariana again and this is uh, this is a uh, broom maker and he's collected uh, the straw from making brooms and he's transporting it to the factory. So actually he's inside the factory with uh, collected uh, straw that would be made into brooms. Wow. And then her departure later in life is to modernism and abstraction and here is a very good example of the divide between light and dark sky and architecture. Oh, this is indeed one of the most powerful abstract photographs, specifically because it really has some of the touches of reality incorporated in it. It's almost yeah. geometrical, but this face that is breaking the straight line of a divide, uh, of a divide and uh, the patterns of the clouds really make it to have more significance. And I again have to get back that I know that nothing is accidental. I'm pretty sure that the reason why those two are 
hanging together is because of their geometrical connection, even though they 180 degrees, but essentially the similar approach. I agree, I agree. It's also have the break in the middle that uh, breaks the geometrical pattern. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's actually true. interesting. It does have uh, ethnographic uh, significance by nature, but it's really based on visual impact more than anything else. Oh, absolutely, I agree. And yeah. again, more of uh, Mariana's. These are the uh, card players, the domino players, and uh, it's the way she's framed it with the interior and then stepping back from it is very removed. It's a, it's a very powerful uh, photograph for Mexico. Wow. For me, as a person who never been to Latin America. Yes. And then here is a, a meeting of elders in outside of a village in Mexico, but it's very timeless and uh, it's very hard to put a date on it. It's but it is contemporary. It's very interesting that uh, timeless was the word you chosen to describe it because the first thing I uh, seen there was actually Russian babushkas who I was observing in my childhood sitting on the benches in front of the house. Oh, wow. It is really one of those moments that uh, says something to everybody, no matter from part of the world you're coming from, no matter what year you was born and growing up at. The, cloth, uh, the clothing is different, but uh, the posture, the whole mood of this particular moment is really eternal. Yeah, that is has an eternity. It's really yeah. amazing. It's interesting. And here are two more uh, photographs by Mariana, young girl, and has a wonderful expression. And also uh, the uh, Day of the Dead uh, gentleman with his bike, who is very makes it very modern. It's timeless in that you you have the bike, so you know it's very modern, but yet the costume is from the colonial period and represents their uh, native dances uh, celebrating feast days and different days of the year. Ooh, this is truly fascinating depiction. One of those portraits that don't actually need a story to them. They're yeah. just a thing on their own, uh, completely mm -hmm. even disconnected from uh, what it was about. And right. another image that says a lot of similar and different things is a bicycle and connection with it to something that is very exclusively Mexican makes it to be something we actually started our discussion with that uh, these women actually in a way contributed to opening the understanding of Mexico to the world. They actually made this connection explaining how it's uh, part of the world family. That's true. So, uh, what, do, do you know what's the significance of this uh, custom? Uh, it's uh, the dance of the Spanish and the Moors. It's the conquest of Mexico. Is the, and he's a, uh, he's a uh, representing a Moor. But it's probably done for uh, a commemoration of a, of a feast day in this village. Mm. Truly fascinating and uh, talking about uh, different directions uh, the, these two artists drifted in, mm -hmm. in their art. As I understand, this is by uh, the second artist, right? Yeah, this Mariana Jampolsky. This is also, she's taken a, a detail of a, uh, probably a dog uh, sculpture by a local artist, a folk artist, on top of a, of a house of an indigenous person, but yet they are uh, commemorating, our, uh, commemorating art and creating art in a uh, very uh, lifelike. It's actually really interesting if you think about it, they actually drifted uh, not just in different directions, but in totally 180 degree different directions. They started both with examining human nature by human interactions with the world and between themselves. Mm -hmm. And one of them uh, continued this exploration by getting deeper in a uh, person's inner soul, basically. And another one went into the direction of looking at the artifacts that society leaves even 
studying how society operates through the objects that surrounds it. So, as I understand, we have a couple of more here, including the one that is flagmanship image of uh, the whole exhibition. Yeah, this one is a really major one by Mariana Jampolska. We have Lola on the left mm -hmm. and Mariana on the right. And Mariana has taken an indigenous person, but because of the wind and the expression and the way that she framed the photograph, it's a very abstract planes and, and shows movement. The other one is very static, but very reflective of native life. Well, in a way, it actually reflects on how the photographers themselves uh, was uh, seeing the world according to what we learned today. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I believe, uh, see it correctly, there is one more we didn't take a look at. So let's yes. go there and try to see what... In the very uh, end of Mariana's life, she was very interested in plants, and this is a banana leaf, and both Western and, uh, and Mariana photographed banana leaves, but Weston did it in a very monumental way when he saw it as a modernist thing. Here it is like a, a Tory or a, a building. She's made it very architectural and very strong, and it's just a banana leaf, but it's it has such structure, it's very architectural. It is really looking like a more human-made object in a way, even though it does have all the properties of natural mm -hmm. uh, phenomena of nature. Well, it's, I do believe it's actually a fitting image to complete this conversation. Thank you very much, Spencer. Thank I mean, you. This Thank you. really wraps it up, not only in terms of it being works from the end of life of photographer, but also in terms of uh, having a hint of decay and ending up with uh, something that suggests civilization. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, really beautiful exhibition, which Thank really you. gives one to... Thank you so much for Thank coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank found that worth watching as much as I did. I'm Mark Unger for Roundtable. Thanks for watching.